Welcome back, WNS down in Sarasota. And uh, as I have been joking here all week, pitcher and catchers reporting. Uh, the Orioles don't have much pitching at this point, and no one knows that better than this guy. He's one of our favorite guys to talk baseball with. He is the uh, writer of all writers and uh, is writing a book on baseball right now and a sort of complete modern history of baseball. He is a historian and author. He is our longtime friend. We welcome Rob Nyer back on from Portlandia out in Oregon where they're still talking about expansion. Hey, if the Orioles draw less than they're drawing, you can have them in a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> hey, Rob, uh, I mean... I would never take another city's team i would not be i would not be uh yeah i said that, that to the browns came and then we we're like welcome in art come on in buddy yeah you know any team's a good team at this point um the collusion thing i mean let's just start at the top uh, and look for, from an orioles fans perspective we've had a chance to win the last couple of years the old man's apparently out to lunch at this point here no one knows what's going on here i mean show walter's lame duck duquette's lame duck jones brock britain's hurt machado who the hell knows that's all that like the real part of this but the real thing is an off season where everybody's gone with the Duquette plan and has just sort of waited for somebody to come down in price, sign on a one-year flyer. Baseball's really a mess right now, and I can see why the Players Association is as stirred up as they are. Well, look, the, the, the union has one mission, and only one. That is to protect the welfare of its members. It isn't to uh, create some sort of social justice. <laughs> it isn't to make things better for professional baseball players because the union has never done a single thing to improve the, the situation of minor league players, as I'm sure you know. It, 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 look, this is, sounds like a knock, and I, okay, it is a little bit. Uh, it bugs me a little bit that they haven't stuck up for the minor leaguers, but the, the Players Association behaves almost exactly as every other union does in America, the big difference being that the average union member is a millionaire. Um, and that's fine. Uh, I'm not saying they don't deserve that much money. Well, part of it is when you're $4 million a year is your average, and you're fighting for chefs in the locker room, and you're, fi you're fighting for everything except a floor and a salary cap, well, which everyone opposed, and now all of a sudden, you know, we're 25 years later, and these Padres sell-offs, and Mar the Marlins have had four sell-offs now, which is what's going to happen when you can't... The Pirates are the latest to sell off again. I mean, when you can't win, why go given $15 million a year to Chris Tillman or whatever, right? Yeah, that's right. And it, it, most people think, seem to think that there was there is some vast conspiracy in baseball to not spend money. I don't. I'm not saying that isn't true because we've seen collusion, as you know, 30 plus years ago. It actually happened, and it wound up costing the owners hundreds of millions of dollars when they were found guilty of collusion, of violating labor law. And if, they have, if they're doing that now, they should be punished again. Um, what I think is happening this winter is not that sort of collusion, if it's collusion at all. What I, what I think is happening is that you've got a confluence of events, two in particular. The most recent labor agreement disincentivizes teams from spending a great deal of money. It costs them down the road. It can cost them various important things, you know, draft picks, uh, money to spend on amateurs, uh, money to spend elsewhere. Um, you know, they want to stand to that luxury ta uh, tax uh, uh, limit. And the other thing that's happened this winter is that, frankly, there aren't that many great players out there. You know, Lorenzo Cain and the three best players available this winter, probably Lorenzo Cain, who signed for a pretty good salary. You Darvish, who signed for basically a market salary, at least based on how good he's been. And J.D. Martinez, who has not signed, but reportedly has a, a five-year, $100 million offer on the table, which is not a small amount of money. It's a little less than you might have gotten a year or two ago, but it's not a small amount of money. And then the rest of the, the top guys, they all have big question marks next to them. So um, I don't think there's collusion. I think that 
uh, the current labor agreement um, and and the, the the overall quality of the players on the market have sort of conspired as inanimate objects to 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 make it look like something strange is happening. When I think it's just a reaction to mark various market forces. Well, and that being said, what will Tony Clark do about it? I mean, this these things, as you know, historically, always set up to the next thing. And, you know, this is an act of war, as the Players Association would see it, when they have to set up a camp with 100 homestead homies who are all legitimate Major League Baseball players, right? Well, they aren't all. I mean, Steve Clevenger is there. Many are. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of guys. Be nice support. to Clevenger. He's from Baltimore. Come on now. They're, hey, I'm on his side. I think everybody deserves a second chance, or almost everybody. <laughs> um, uh, look, uh, a lot of those guys, almost all those guys you write, are legitimate major leaguers. The question that I always want to ask, unfortunately, we don't really have an, we don't really have answers. That are what kind of offers are out there? If you show me a guy who's, you know, two wins better than a replacement player, AAA player, whatever, uh, if he has no offers, then I think there's something wrong. If 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 he has offers for millions of dollars, but there's not as many millions as he and his agent think he deserves, you know, then we have a discussion. Um, so you know, we don't know. We've heard a few rumors about various offers for. You know, various people, J.D. Martinez in particular, but otherwise, I don't know what's out there. Nobody knows what's out there except the, the teams, a few of them, and the agents. Actually, the teams shouldn't all know them because they're not supposed to share that information. The agents can share that information, oddly. Uh, so they know. Um, we don't. Um, ideally, you'd like to see all those guys playing. If they're better than the guys who will get their jobs. I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. Uh, do you want to pay $8 million for a guy who's going to win you one game or $0 or close to 0 for a guy who's going to win you half a game? I'd probably go the half a game guy and not spend the extra $8 bucks. He is Rob Nyer. You can follow him out on Twitter at Rob Nyer. Tell everybody about the book that you're working on right now because I know you're pretty much head down on that and have been all winter long. And uh, I'm a Lords of the Realm guy. I like the history of baseball. I like smart baseball books and uh, and, and uh, not necessarily analytical stuff, but historical stuff. And uh, you know, I have no idea what this project's about, Rob. Well. You know, it's not really analytical. Um, uh, there's some of that in there because that's a big part of baseball now. But really, it's 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 about how the game is played. I'm I'm focusing on a single game from last fall, an A's Astros game, and going through batter by batter, sometimes pitch by pitch. Um, so there's some of that. Um, you know, how do we how did we get here? Um, why is this guy throwing a curveball here and not a not a fastball? But it's a little more, for the most part, it's a bit more universal than that. You know, it's why are there so many home runs now? Why why are there so many strikeouts? Where does this all end? Does it just keep going up and up and up? More strikeouts, more home runs forever? Um, is there a way to get back to where we were five years ago or even thirty when you could have a you know, Vince Coleman coexisting in the same league with with uh, Mike Schmidt, which we don't really have anymore. Um, so it touches on all that stuff. Well, uh, touching on the bases here this year for teams that can and cannot win, we're at the point with the Orioles, and, and let's drill down onto this. And, and part of the disgust that I have for this, Rob, is I can go back into the 70s and 80s, and I don't really know if Charlie Finley was really swimming in money or not. And, and I think we're at a different era here where uh, the, the revenues are all out on the table. Everyone kind of sort of knows. And you know, our buddy Maury uh, Brown from Forbes, and Forbes puts the money together as to how much these teams amass. They wake up every year on opening day washed in money and unless they go giving it to the David Seguiz or the Kevin Millwoods of the world and can't win, um, you would like to think that an organization like the Orioles that has piled about $2 billion worth of assets over the 25 years that, uh, that Peter Angelos has owned the team would have the money to sign a Manny Machado if they wanted Manny Machado, to, to go after John Scope now before he gets too expensive, um, to maybe reward Adam Jones with a year or two at the end of the year. I, I don't know, but there, there's no more rewards or uh, platitudes for, for good service or any of that. There's just... Spring training, 
We have no three-starter, no four-starter, no five-starter. This team finished in last place with historically bad pitching last year, and uh, it's after Valentine's Day now, and they still have no pitching. Uh, there was no commitment to winning. There, there's no way, un unless you're seriously brain damaged, to think that the Orioles are trying to win this year. Um, and for Tony Clark to say that these owners aren't trying to win, you know, that's a fair criticism from a variety of fan bases in places like Tampa and Pittsburgh uh, and places where they're getting plenty of money, too, these days. They're just not spending it. Well, um, I think it's true that some teams are making money. Um, some teams probably aren't, or at least not very much. I mean, the Royals claim to have lost $900,000 last year. I'm not sure I buy that. Um, you know, especially when you factor in sort, you know, the sort of things like paying your kids a million bucks to serve on the board of directors, that sort of thing happens. Um, it happened with the Dodgers a few years ago uh, with their previous ownership. Um, <clears throat> what I do wonder is what would happen if every team behaved as their fans wanted them to behave, which is to say every team spent every dollar that came in, um, if not more, in the case of owners with billions of dollars, as some of them have. Uh, you know, look at uh, the, the Yankees, for example. They could spend twice what they spend and still make a profit, I think. I think the Dodgers could. Uh, now, that sort of leaves aside the, all the overhead that in baseball, which is considerable. But I, I'm sure there are teams that could spend a lot more than they spend. Where would, what's the end result there? What re we really want as fans is for my guy, my owner, to do everything that he can to win, even if that means you know writing a personal check. But we don't want all the other owners to do that, because then we're right back where we started, except the players have more of the money. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, it is a zero-sum game. They, every team can't win 90, 90 games, no matter how, how much the owners spend. Rob Nyer joining us here. Well, I mean, the Yankees clearly want to win, and, uh, you know, the, the Red Sox clearly want to win, and they're in the division. We're really in a tough spot here, Rob. Uh, you yeah. know, where I think <laughs> it's, this isn't just this spring training. I can look into my little orange crystal ball and my Blue Jay crystal ball and my Tampa Ray crystal ball, and I see a lot of 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you know, all the way through where there's have and there's have not, and have not just means they have a lot of money, they just don't have a lot of players and I think the Astros thing and the way they did it really becomes a crutch for fans who want to make excuses for their owners well the Cubs did the same thing um, you know it happened two years in a row basically the Cubs won in 2016 the Astros in 2017 both teams finished last multiple seasons in a row um, lost 100 games the, I think the Astros did it three or four times the Cubs did it once um, but finished last, I think, three times straight. Uh, so that, yeah, that it can work. Um, it only works, I think, if you have a commitment to the process and to actually spending the money when it looks like you're close. Even the Royals, w when they rebuilt, and it took eight years for them to do it, uh, when they got close, they spent money. Not, not a ton, but... But they spent they spent money. They went out and, and got some players who even your uh, dog's angry, Rob. I hear he, it. He, man. He's still mad about the Royals um, not uh, winning last year again. But <laughs> but um, well, Hosmer and Mustakas are still out there. So they, you know. Mike Mustakas, <laughs> Hosmer, they're still out there. I mean, uh, and the Royals aren't going to get them, even though they probably could afford to sign them. But what's how does that fit into? the plan, the process, I don't know. I don't think it works for, the, for, for those guys, for that team, because by the time they're ready to win again, have enough talent, um, <laughs> those, they won't be very good anymore. You're looking three or four or five years down the road and on the down slopes of, of their careers. So, look, uh, again, I think every, you, you want your, your, your owner to spend more, uh, but you also want there to be a process, I think. And there seems to be sort of a gentleman's agreement in baseball, maybe has been for a long time, that even if the owner is personally wealthy, or even if the team is making some money, they'll spend in a manner that's roughly commensurate with their team revenues and perhaps their market size. Um, and, you know, sure, in order to break out of that mold and spend whatever he wanted, he could go deep into his own pockets, as owners have 
very occasionally, um, but it never lasts for long. And I suspect that those those owners aren't uh, uh, looked upon with kindness by their their fellow owners. There seems to be a pecking order that remains in place in terms of uh, of, of payrolls um, based on how much money you're bringing in, regardless of how much money you have in the bank. Rob, for uh, for you with the the National League and and the balance and the strength and all this, Arizona, Colorado came on. Obviously, the Dodgers were were there last year. The Nationals are coming back. The Cubs are going to be there. Uh, you know, I found the National League to be really sort of boisterous last year. I, I enjoyed watching the National League brand of baseball more than the American League brand of baseball last year. Well, I I, I thought the wild card race was was particularly interesting in the National League, maybe because the Diamondbacks and the Rockies, and to some degree the Brewers, for that matter, came out of nowhere. Nobody had any of those teams, um, even on the fringes of the postseason race, except for maybe the Brewers, and, and that'd be a stretch, I think. Uh, so that, that was fun. It really was. And, you know, watching the Cubs have to sort of uh, scratch and scrape and not really lock up a playoff spot until early or middle, the middle of September was, was interesting. It looks like this year there's going, to be, there's going to be a huge favorite in every division, which I think was basically the case or nearly the case a year ago as well. It looks like, uh, look, baseball is unpredictable. One of these big favorites will probably uh, go into the tank for whatever reason, um, injuries most likely. Um, but the division races don't look good this year. Again, it looks like the wild card is where the action is going to be. Rob and I are joining us here. What is your book called? You got a name for it yet? It's called uh, Powerball, Powerball, and it's got a subtitle that I can't remember the name. I, I can never remember, but uh, <laughs> Powerball. Yeah, you know, a lot of it's about, again, power hitting. All, baseball now is all power. It's all power, power pitching and power hitting. Uh, that's what it's become. It's not so as much than, fun to watch it that way for me. I mean, I it's almost like tennis where everything's an ace. You know, women's tennis was better because they actually hit the ball back and forth. Uh, baseball for me with strikeouts and, <clears throat> and walks and home runs, I, it's... It's not as good a product, I'll say that. I mean, if you're a kid growing up watching the game, there's there's not as much action, there's not as much going on, but chicks still dig the long ball. Well, that's what the commissioner says. The commissioner claims that, according to their polls or something, the fans like home runs and they like strikeouts. Well, look, sure, we like those and other things too, right? I think, I mean, I'm not sure I buy... Until they show me their poll, I'm not going to. I'm not really going to buy into the the notion that the fans are hap, are fine with the way things are. And look, they probably are. They probably don't know any better. But you, how long have we been hearing that baseball needs to market itself better? To me, you, it's easier to market yourself if you have athleticism to market, not just strikeouts, not just home runs, but also. Great players making tremendous defensive plays. Hey, my last name's Aparicio. I'm built on defense and, and running the bases, right? Exactly. You know? And 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 you know, market. Imagine what baseball could do with with Ricky Henderson. Well, you know what? Ricky Henderson literally w- could not exist now. I don't care how fast you are, you won't be allowed to steal more than seventy or eighty bases. You can't be Ricky Henderson. Um, sure, and Jolton Simmons is basically. As good as Ozzy Smith was, granted he hasn't done it for as long as Ozzy did, but the the athleticism, the skills are essentially there. But guess what? We don't get to see it as often because there aren't nearly as many batted balls in play as there used to be. Uh, you know, the strikeout rate when Ozzy played was maybe five or six per nine innings. Now it's eight or nine or ten, um, not ten, eight or nine uh, probably. So. The game has changed in a fundamental way, uh, and it's given us many more strikeouts and home runs, many fewer batted balls in play, many fewer great fielding plays, stolen bases, double plays, runners going first to third. I mean, these are all, I'm not just making these things up, these are all incredibly quantifiable, and the, 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 the contrast between today and 30 years ago is dramatic. That's a game you can market with all these guys running around on the field doing all these different crazy athletic things. Um, sure, you can still market home runs and, and strike and strikeouts. Just watch what they do with 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 Justin Verlander and Steven Strasburg and and all the rest of the pitchers and with Aaron Judge and Mike Stanton. They're going to market the hell out of them. 
But I would prefer to market, if I was doing that job, um, all sorts of different players. Rob, I always love having you on, man. Uh, it's almost baseballs, and, and it's very, very hard. I mean, and you know, Luke and I just, and I'm stretching out, not sticking to sports anymore, as you well know, uh, because we're Facebook friends and Twitter friends and all that stuff. But uh, it's very, very hard to sit here and talk about the Orioles as spring training opens, knowing they have absolutely no desire to win and no chance to win, and. That's a disgusting proposition because I lived through it for a decade here, uh, and and now it's back again. And uh, you know I will continue to rail about that, but I will read Powerball when you uh, you bring it out. And I'll at least watch the Orioles until they go ten games under five hundred. I appreciate which that, which might be you know right around Preakness, right around Memorial Day. Uh, you know um, they have no pitching, man. Like I I I just I, I can't get over that you would field a Major League Baseball team after what you went through last year and not do anything to improve it. It's, it's, it's really a disgusting time to be an Orioles fan, I think. It, you know, when you can't develop your own pitchers, and, which is everybody has trouble with, and you don't want to spend the money to go out and get it, it's rough. It's rough. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what the solution is, cause, because aside from Darvish, there aren't any staff savers out there. Hey, man. Keep the faith. At some point, uh, it'll all turn around. They keep telling me that. Uh, our last parade was 1983. And look, Philadelphia had a parade last week, so miracles happen. You know, that's all they I do. can say. Take care of yourself out in Portland. Put your head down on a book. We'll be looking forward to reading it. Uh, I'll check in with you sometime around opening day. Looking forward to it. Thanks, buddy. Rob Nyer, one of our favorites. He's out of Rob Nyer on Twitter and has written many books. Powerball's coming out in a couple of months. You can follow him on Twitter if you love baseball. You love Rob Nyer. It's as simple as that. Nasty, is w, nasty at WNST.net reaches me. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, streaming live on our Facebook as well as our YouTube WNSTV channel. And our Ray Lewis trip includes two baseball games. How about that? We're going to see the Tribe take on the uh, A's on Friday night. We're going to see the Pirates take on the Cardinals on Sunday. All the details for our Ray Lewis road trip which is also a baseball road trip, and it's also a rock and roll road trip, and it might even be a Ralphie Christmas story road trip for some folks. Uh, and, and it's uh, uh, certainly going to be a, uh, an eating, drinking, fun, little 52 kind of trip. Hot ticket sales, man. We're selling uh, through the roof right now. Go to the Road Trips tab at WNST.net. Throw me an email if you need anything there at all. Opening day's coming. <laughs> Are you ready? I am Nestor. We are WNST.net, AM 1570, WNST Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking. Baltimore Sports.